morning everybody. This video is going to be a walking and drone tour of the property specifically for fence planning purposes. This winter I'm going to get to building some fence. I've reached out to Isaac who works with Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm and so this video is going to be for him to get a look at our place and for everybody else to just follow along. So I'll show an overhead shot of the whole property right now and explain that I'm standing at our entrance to the property so looking behind me is the very start of our property it's in the southwest kind of quadrant where we've got our home site we've put up a yurt there there's still an old house all of our utilities are here and this over the years will always be kind of the main campus if we built a shed a barn those kind of things it would all happen down here so this spot with the yurt and everything will never be you know a dedicated grazing area so I just mentioned that for planning purposes of how the fencing will work because I think about things like you know we've got young kids I don't think hot fence over here by the house makes a lot of sense but I, I'm curious people's experience with that so let's start walking the perimeter on foot and I'll send the drone up in a different a few different places and just show the whole thing so looking north this is an old barbed wire fence that runs all the way north so this is our western property line running north this is this old barbed wire fence with t-posts at some point it just I don't know how many strands it originally was but now it's one or two it used to have a little bit of electric tape you can see but it's basically not a fence anymore and it's in that condition all the way up. You can see we use netting for our chickens and back there for our goats and our dogs are in that netting because just not, none of the existing fence is actually usable. I'm assuming that this barbed wire fence should just come out and I should completely replace it. I've, I've talked to the neighbor about it. She's an older lady and She'd like to be working on the fence herself, but I don't think that's actually going to happen, and I think I would score a lot of good neighbor points by just taking care of it ourselves. So I think a good run of high tensile fence over here would be great. She actually runs Katahdin sheep on her side. She doesn't do any kind of rotation or anything. They've got about 20 acres that they just free range. You can see them out there. All right, let's continue going north that direction. There's the dogs and the goats. And here's, here's the look. This, this, this small field of a few acres uh, kind of gives way to forest. At first some oak that we've been working on opening up and then eventually mostly dug fir and cedar, conifer forest as it becomes a, a steeper hillside. And this barbed wire fence actually drifts off of our property line following the tree line that way. And I've already talked to our neighbor about it. If we rebuild fence, she's fine with rebuilding it over onto her property line. They originally did it just for the convenience of going around the trees rather than through them. And she doesn't manage the other side of the fence anyways. So if we were running goats and other things, rotationally and doing everything we can to make the land better rather than worse she would not mind at all if we were occasionally on her property for that all right i'll send up the drone and get a look all the way to the north side of the property there for you
Okay, the drone showed you a trip up to the north side of the property in that northwest corner. Now I'll walk up there, but I'll walk there kind of through the center of the property and show some of the, the things we'll have to plan around for our fencing. One of them is this pond here that I'm still still working on, but it, we're kind of in the wet and muddy season, so I've paused on it. But the, the pond is across our access road from our yurt and where we stay. And I think it'll definitely be a useful watering point for animals anywhere on this western side of the property. And then I'll, I'll take you through. We've basically got a tractor road that cuts through the property north-south. So I'll pick up there. Okay, behind me is north. You can see that road heads up in, and I'll walk you through that. But just for reference, this part of the property is nice closed canopy forest. It's not overrun with blackberries like some other spots. You can see this is how we keep our pigs with this single wire, and they're hanging out in here right now. But let's head north to where the, the drone left off, up in that upper meadow. Walking north looks like this. You can see previous owners had had some T-posts here, probably used more of that electrical ribbon as fencing. My concern if I installed permanent fencing along here is as we do selective forestry in here, a permanent fence would make that a lot harder. So I'm curious if that means we always just stick with temporary step-in posts whenever we need to use this as a paddock division, or if there's a style of simpler permanent fencing that is easy to take down and pick up again whenever we need to have equipment working on trees right here. Okay, so we pop out to grazing pasture up here. It's 10, 10, maybe 15 acres of pretty decently open land, especially once we get past this pair of oak trees. All right, here it is. So there, this is our kind of nicest <clears throat> open field. And that tree line is what the drone followed and our northwest property line is up in that corner with trees back there. I'll walk all the way up there and then pick it up again. Okay, that PVC pipe is the northwest corner of our property. You can see that gravel road. That's a, a logging road that leads to lots and lots of Weyerhaeuser land and it's a Weyerhaeuser road of forestry that's our eastern neighbors, we'll get there. You can see it's some field fencing with barbed wire is what they've got back here um, with rotten old wood posts in a lot of places, you know. Maybe that's something you repair, but I would be inclined to just, while I'm in the mode of building nice new fence, rip it out and build new. And so it becomes wooded with a nice cover of trees for about 20 yards, but if you see that light out there, that's that upper pasture. Here's one of the spots where you can see why I'd be inclined to just rip out the old fencing and start new. There's just tree, trees have gone down and crushed it. It's really beat up. I'm guessing you don't really salvage woven wire fencing that has been crushed like that. Okay, I'm on the gravel road on the northern property line. You can see this historically has been used as an access point from this side a little bit, so this could be a potential location for a gate. Although my concern there would be we're really far away from where we live up here. We wouldn't see anybody else coming and going. So that might be a reason to just not put access here so that we make trespassing harder. So that's a consideration. And then this gravel road heads uphill and curves right and then curves left again to get us to our northeast property line. I'll send up the drone from here for a minute to get some shots of that.
I'm almost to the top of the property. The northeast corner is the highest point of elevation. You can see the, the road is built up above our land a bit. And so the new fence line would be, you know, whatever the, the fencing easement off of a road is, 10 feet off the road or something down here, get out of this gravel shoulder. So there'd be some tree removal or just tree cleanup to do. And the whole thing would be curved. So I'm wondering the best way to handle a contiguous curve when you can't just have corner post, corner post run a straight line. Okay, this stake is our northeast property line, property corner I should say. And then this warehouser ground was clear cut within the last few years and they left behind surveyor tape along the entire property line where they knew to stop cutting. So the fence line to build through there will be through a fair amount of scrubby trees and brush that was left behind. As we get lower down, you'll see we already started to clean it up. But it looks like that. And I'll start walking it now. Here's the eastern property line. Same thing, old field fence and barbed wire, you know, stuck into this old oak tree, that kind of thing. And in a lot of places, just buried on the ground. We've been through here with saws and started to clean it up, and we'll have to finish that out. This is a good time to talk about. So, a lot of time when Greg Judy talks about fencing, he talks about how rigorous the fencing needs to be depends on what's on the other side of the fence you know with like blacktop highway being the example of you know run five six wires and really make sure nothing gets through but our eastern property line is just logged forestry ground and none of the other property lines are anything like a highway the closest to it is a logging road that has you know a few trucks a day going 30 miles an hour or less so that's where I'm curious if we can get away with perimeter fence of something like four wires I don't know I guess we could do five but it's just one of those things where build it to what's necessary but anyways walking this eastern property line it's forested back here but there's some spots like here where those oak trees would love more space so we'd probably thin these fir trees out and expand the pasture out this way but then it's fairly level where I'm walking but it's quickly going to start sloping down and it's a decent slope the west the rest of the way down the eastern property line so it looks a lot like this and you saw on the drone footage a bit of what it looks like and I'll pick up further down this hill okay continuing down the eastern property line you can see a survey marker here my concern at this point is this this spot is extremely rocky but looking at it previous fence builders managed to get t-posts in the ground so i guess that answers my question of can i get a timeless post in the ground over here so it's fairly rocky down this slope and now what we're entering down here as we head towards the southeast quadrant of the property is an area that we're going to try to turn into a nice silvo pasture area. So I'll pop out there and show you. Okay, here's where I was talking about it opens up. 
and we're going to try to make a nice silvo pasture, which if you haven't heard that term means trees plus pasture together, you know, not a closed canopy forest where grass can't grow, but say 30% of the area is covered with trees and that leaves enough room for light to hit the ground and grow grass. But anyways, we've had a we had a mulcher out here for 2 days because we ran we ran the goats and the pigs back here, but there was a lot of just thick, say one, two inch diameter maple trees clumped together so tight that it would have been ages with a chainsaw. Fortunately, there was a mulcher nearby that we could hire out and I've been throwing grass seed behind it and I'll continue that. And, but anyways, this is the Eastern property line as we head south. And now the next thing to plan our fence build around is the fact that our entire southern property line is a year-round creek and the creek is down here and our plan is to not get the fence down too close to the creek but kind of use the topography as a guide and back here there's basically an elevation kind of a bench up high that then gives way down a pretty steep slope to the creek. So we're planning on staying up above it. Now there's too many berries and stuff to see it, but the slope drops down back there to the creek. And so our plan would be to run fencing along this eastern property line back here, somewhere about back there where I'm pointing, and then stay above the creek and use that topography and start heading west that direction. I'll take you somewhere where we can see that better. Okay, so we're looking north at that open silvo pasture area and turn in south towards the creek and you can see this path is a path where I would have backed up the tractor mower last year and then kind of stopped when it got too steep. And then you can see the creek down there and I know the camera doesn't pick it up but it's a steep slope and that's I don't even know 50 vertical feet down, maybe a little less than that, but it's a pretty good drop. So again, we've got to pick a fence line somewhere up here to capture all that silvo pasture. And then we'll just draw a line and w what we plan on doing is just not ever managing too close to the creek. Let it stay wild. It's really nice down there. It's nice for walking, enjoying, enjoying the stream, and that's that's the plan. So we're walking where the the southern fence would be. We had the mulcher come down and kind of clean up a, a line. Now, much like the northern fence line, which curves along the logging road, this southern fence line would curve as well. Although we could just break that down into a few straight lines. We'll, um, we'll have to look at a map and really pick how we want to do it. Okay, we're on the western side of that silvo pasture. You can see the yurt back there. So that means somewhere around here we need to choose a corner to end our electric fence and just have no electric fencing too close to the yurt. So we've got to pick a corner somewhere down here for a southwest corner and then head north with it. There's power at the old house, that pink house is in rough shape, but it does have working power there, so that's where we would grab power for a fence charger. You know, fence could be running north 
over here somewhere. And then we have some decisions to make for how much permanent fencing versus how much temporary fencing we use. We'll have to install permanent fencing for this, this say 10 acre silvo pasture back here. And so the question is, do we fence off one big rectangle, kind of at the base of that slope that we're looking at as the northern side of that silvo pasture? And then do we install a permanent fence up that logging road, or excuse me, the tractor road heading north from here? I'll, uh, I'll show an overhead map and kind of brainstorm my thoughts on it for thinking through what we should do. There's a pig. There's a good pig. You guys hungry, huh? Do I need to bring you your food? Yeah, bring me my food. And some little pigs. Little pigs, little pigs. All right, let's hang out with some pigs that are eating their daily ration while we talk through some big picture stuff. So what's the goal for the property for Tina and I? Well, long term, we'd love to turn it into, you know, a beautiful, productive place. There's a lot of parts of the property like what we're looking at right here, scrubby with blackberries and shrubs. And so what do we actually want to do with it? We want, you know, there's spots that should be nice conifer forest, dug fir and cedar, and then kind of do sustainable logging and thinning over time. I don't see us ever clear cutting anything out here. The closest we could get to clear cutting is spots like that nice pasture in the northwest corner of the property. I could see us cutting trees to expand it where it's nice level ground. If we could take out a couple rows of trees and gain an acre or two of pasture land, there's spots where I could see us doing that. And then we want a nice silvo pasture down here in the southeastern quadrant. And then kind of the home site area wouldn't ever be actively grazed, but would kind of be developed more as a campus with a home, the yurt, which would be guest housing eventually, a shop and or barn, just kind of keeping the campus down there. So big decisions to think through is where to put permanent fence and where to rely on temporary fencing. You know, this this southeastern silvo pasture is a, a good example. We know we need permanent fencing along the southern line bordering the creek but up above it. We know we need permanent fencing along the entire eastern property line. But to carve out that, say, 10-acre-ish silvo pasture, do we run permanent fence along that the north part of that rectangle, or do we just always use step-in posts and temporary fence whenever we're using that? It's kind of the pros and cons of the permanent fence gives us more efficiency and makes it easier to move animals. The, the temporary fence makes it easier to work that property and come and go on there. But... Um, I'm more inclined to do more permanent fencing in a spot like that because we've got young kids, I'm working an off-farm job, mostly from home, but we're not daily move type of, um, type of farmers yet with the animals. We move them weekly, roughly. And so anything that makes that more efficient, efficient like you know, a, a big square, 10 acres of permanent fencing, and we just run lines straight across it to create you know, five or six paddocks across it and move them through, that would make it more possible for us to move faster than weekly if we ever wanted to. Same idea in the northwestern pasture. You know, We need permanent fencing along the entire western property line shared with our neighbor, permanent fencing along the whole northern property line. Do we cut that entire area in half with a permanent fence that goes up through the woods, or do we keep that as temporary fence? And do we carve out a permanent fence that maybe runs west from that tractor road out to the western property line? And then, you know, we, we kind of, I've imagined carving the property into quadrants that we could rotate the animals through and if all of them were made up of permanent fencing then chopping them up with temporary fencing would be really efficient 
Um, oh, I didn't mention what kind of animals. So we know we're sticking with goats for quite a while because they're doing such a good job clearing brush like this. And as we do clean up projects, the goats coming back and trimming that back will be really valuable. We, we want to get into sheep because they could do a similar job, but they're probably more marketable for their meat than goats. We're enjoying the pigs. I'm not sure, you know, as the property gets nicer, I don't know if we start running out of areas where we would want to run pigs. So pigs are iffy, but they're also the easiest animal to fence that we've ever had. I mean, this single wire is just awesome. And then we could see ourselves eventually running a couple head of cattle with the sheep as a mixed herd. But I, I don't know if our 50 acres that has a decent chunk of it as forest, it's not 50 acres of pure pasture, I don't know if it's ever worth trying to grow to a breeding herd of cattle versus I think a breeding herd of sheep and a breeding herd of goats makes a lot more sense. So that's, that's, the, um, that's what I'm thinking about and that's our situation on the on the fencing. So we'll be consulting with Isaac, doing a lot of planning, buying materials and tools to do the fencing, and this winter we will get to building fencing. In Western Oregon we have mild, wet winters. The ground is nice and wet, and so driving posts and working with the ground will be easiest in the winter. So that's the plan. So there'll be a follow-up at some point when we're building fence. Thanks everybody. See ya. I want attention too. Oh, I know her, I know. Mm -hmm. Oh, you go, girl. Mm -hmm.